This afternoon, we are here at Mumbai International Film Festival for an exclusive masterclass on the unique approach to animation pioneered by George Squishkebel. We extend our gratitude to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, the National Film Development Corporation, and the Satyajit Three Films and Television Institute, Kolkata. This masterclass offers in-depth exploration of animation techniques, from character designs to digital tech, with practical exercises for animators to hone their storytelling and animation skills. join me in welcoming with a round of applause Mr. George Skrishkabel, sir, as an animator, director and producer and moderating this masterclass is Ms. Dhani Desai Ma'am, who is an acclaimed international award-winning animation filmmaker and curator. I now invite Shri D. Ramakrishnan Sir, General Manager of National Film Development Corporation, to come and felicitate our esteemed guest. to Ms. Dhani Desai Ma'am to commence today's enriching masterclass. It's a very unusual situation because my name is Dhani and uh, I've lost my voice today. But this happens with a lot of animators because masters there is one film uh, called The Man Without a Shadow and his shadow disappears and so does my voice today. We are animators so we can free our shadows and voices there are so many things happening in the festival so probably they have gone to see in the other auditoriums so this is the situation anyway i'll continue uh, well i'm dhwani desai been in the field since nearly 33 years now uh, i have seen all types of animation but uh, the reason why i decided to curate this particular session is that in India, uh, generally I have seen over the years, there are people who do fantastic animation, uh, which is uh, a little art oriented, but a lot of people give more importance to commercial style of animation. And I over the years, I have attended MIF since the last 34 years. I have not missed any. Initially I used to come as a student, then as an animation professional, and since now, nearly 12 years, I have been started curating animation programs, that is master classes, country focus programs, and retrospectives. This year I decided to bring in uh, George Schwiss Gable's master class in retrospective, among my other two packages, that is Greek animation and Argentina animation. Well, uh, Coming to George's films, 
they are something very different which we usually don't get to see in India. He is an unparalleled voice in the history of animation. Before the advent of 3D animation, this master started uh, doing his animation by painting on glass. That also with extraordinary camera movements and walkthroughs. And that was nearly 30 years or 40 years or even 50 years ago. I myself am, am a 3D animator. Still, I am still fascinated with the art he has. Uh, he has also been influenced with certain art movements of Europe. That is Fauvism and Surrealism. I will come to that later. But while talking about Master's work, he has been uh, awarded in several international festivals multiple times, won several Lifetime Achievement Awards in many countries, including NSC, Zagreb, uh, Switzerland, Swiss award he's got, even the France has given him the award for Lifetime. He's also there in the Oscar committee since 2019. Uh, another reason why I decided to get uh, George's films was that I come from a creative family of poets and writers and filmmakers. I myself am a poet. I have, since my childhood, read French poetry and especially surrealistic poetry, which I can see in his films. I have been exposed and read since my childhood to Andre Breton, Baudelaire, Rainbow, and all these glimpses can be seen in his film in the surrealism. But something which really strikes and takes my attention is Octavio Paz's poetry a Mexican surrealistic poet who had won the Nobel Prize in 1990. I would like to quote his couplet before the master starts his class. Between going and staying, the day wavers. Between going and staying, the day wavers. All visible and all elusive. All all too near, but can't be touched. That's exactly what we feel about the master's art. His camera movements, his paint on glass, and the loops and the movements and the cycles are not only extraordinary, but it's like poetry on canvas. This is the art of George's Swiss Gable. And I am so very proud and privileged and honored to get master for my dear Miff that has made me an animation filmmaker today. George, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Um, thank you to coming to say my presentation. Um, I only made a short film and without dialogue. I still use uh, acrylic painting on cello and uh, I, I um, also use digital camera to shoot the, the drawing. Uh, until uh, 2011 I use, <coughs> sorry, I use uh, uh, 35 millimeter camera, but when the digital uh, forced me to use, I I changed my my uh, way. I have an animal stand, so now I continue to use this, but just with a digital camera. Um, it is no longer useful to teach this technique, so I hope that my presentation can uh, generate interest 
to tell a story, even without a story, or presenting uh, ID, visual ID. Um, and uh, I will talk about four topics, music, loops, movement on the space, and metamorphosis. At the beginning, I will um, talk about the steps, um, because um, I, I, maybe you know how to make animated films, so I will be briefly introduce how my way to make animated film. Sometimes it is when I walk and I travel, I made some sketches like that, or like that, to, to make um, a new project, uh, the background for, for the film. <coughs> Again. And sometimes the beginning of a storyboard, because before I uh, made a storyboard, I also made a line test um, before to to go to try to find a financial support and also to to know exactly what I want to do. It's uh, two step of the same uh, storyboard. The first one and then the last one I I. Um, I used to make the storyboard. And also I use, we can, like a key drawing to make the storyboard, the key drawing on the line test. And I use both for the storyboard and for the line test. This is a, a storyboard. Speak a little louder. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. I use the small, small size also to make a, um, a composition and uh, to try to find color for my uh, one second. Some example like that. It is very small size like that. And the result it, I use 12 field uh, size to all my about all my film. Again for the black and white, uh, if I want to. Especially if I want to make those loops, I must know exactly the beginning and the end. The end must be exactly the same as the beginning. Again, um, normal size. And I, now I will use a very s a short film, about 20 seconds. Uh, it was a homage of uh, Rodolf Topfer from Geneva. He is considered in Europe of the first writer who made a comics to put together text and images, like in Yellow Kid in USA. And for making that film, I I use um, sorry I use I made a storyboard about only. Uh, 60 drawing because this 20 second music, a bagatelle of Beethoven, I use 240 drawing. And first I use with this 60 drawing to make the storyboard and also to make the first line test we will see, 8 by 8 frame. And then with 120 drawing, I made the second line test, 4 by 4. And the third one, it is two by two, uh, so you will see the first. Normally, you must add the music. What about the sound? Second one. And now the last one, the last story of the line test. Sorry.
Another result is use dry pastel on sandpaper. It is only 30 seconds with the credit. Three possibilities with music. For example, first use existing music and follow the structure of the music, or first make the images and then ask a music composer to make the music. Or the third possibility is to work together with a music composer from the beginning. And score. I don't re can read a score. So, when I want to use existing music, I, uh, I, I put the music, I add the music, and then I, I draw. I draw to follow, to, not to follow, to find the, the structure of the music and the rhythm of the music. This kind of drawing. And this, in this uh, rudimentary uh, storyboard, first I draw the axis, and then to follow the music, and then the character or the background. And we will see a storyboard of this film romance. No, no, sorry, not a storyboard, a, a line test of the film romance, and then the same short sequence uh, with the film. very old line test. I was in the NC International Animated Film Festival and I saw a retrospective of Patrick Bokanowski, a director I like, like very much his work. And then I realized uh, all the music was made by Michelle Bokanowski, his wife. So I asked her she, if she agreed to make the music for my next film. She agreed, but she wanted uh, the film was finished and then she can make the music. And I, will, I was a little bit afraid because why two years without know which music she want to make for my film. So I use uh, Variation Heroic from Beethoven to make all my, my film in case of I don't like the music of Michel Bakanovsky. But finally I use the music of Michel Bakanovsky. And now you will see a, sh a short part of that film with um, Beethoven music, music and then with uh, Michel Bakunovsky. It's exactly the same image.
before we move ahead, you must have all the people who have attended this retrospective has noticed that in music is a very integral part in his films. I want to ask you one question before you go ahead. In many of your films, Judith, our friend, common friend, Judith Gruber, Schritzer from Canada, has composed your films. And now, your son, a very well-known pianist, Louis Schwiss-Gabel, is composing your films. Uh, how is it working with both the people, different music directors? Also, how is it working uh, with your son? Is it easy or difficult? Because you are a master. No, it's very different because my my son my son play music, so I ask him if he can play this music. Of course, I can play, and uh, I use the music. I follow the music what he play, and uh, he help me a lot to understand the structure of the music. Because for me, I must have many time to understand how oh, this part come again, and I am not a musician. But if I ask uh, Judith Kubersitzer. It is different because the film is finished and then she made the music and the soundtrack for the film. My son is not composer, it's an uh, interpret, uh, so it is a difference. And it was very easy to work with my son because he, he can help a lot, as I say, to understand the, the structure of the music. Another question that comes to my mind is, your films have no dialogues. Is it a conscious effort? Or you are just too much in love with music? I, I, no, it's a contract, but I like to have some contract. And because at the beginning I don't plan to f do all my film without dialogue, but more and made film, more I think it's the best way because in animated film you can see, they can, you can show the film in a lot of country with different langu language. And uh, if you must, read a text, you cannot uh, see what's happened, you, can, you, can, you cannot see what's happened in the image. Of course, some, some script need scenario, very good film need scenario, it's a different. So, uh, we, if we, I, I have this content to not use dialogue, it's a limited for uh, different scenario, script. One more question on music. A lot of animators across the world say that you animate music. So, do you compose the music before your films or after the film is ready? Uh, in, in my case, I have some film inspired by the music, but and other film, oh, I try to make a, mu a, a script exactly with the same structure of the music, for example, the film Romance, the structure of the music, with the help of my son, it is A, B, A, B, C. So I try to find a, a story with the same structure, and I, I, I use a, a, a novel of uh, Alain de Breton, uh, Essay in Love, and it was uh, I, my film was based of the story, but with a, the same structure of the music. Or in the film El Koenig, also this film, we was in China, and my son must explain to the audience what the meaning of the, what he want to play. And when he he, he say in that in that film, in that music, there are uh, narrator at the beginning and the four voice. Narrator, kid, king, and father. So I realized I can make a film. And it was a little bit more easy with a film because the poem has four vice, the music also four vice, the same meaning of the music. So if I don't put dialogue but images, maybe we can understand. Okay. Now we can continue with your. There are a lot of connections between 24 frames per second 
in the cinema and the tempi in uh, how many tempi in one minute. As you can see, uh, there are a lot of connections. And when I made a film without music, uh, I like to follow the rhythm. And for example, in the film Retouche, I use uh, several loops from 8, 12, 16, 24, 32, and 48 frame. All these loops were included in the big one of 96 for a wave two seconds like that and two seconds like that. And we will see um, uh, people who walk and jump 8 frame, 8 frame, 16 frame, 8 frame, 8 frame, 16 frame, and all his arm uh, become a bird and then become again the, the man. Oh, sorry. This is uh, <laughs> a sketch for, uh, just for this film, Retouche. <laughs> was made after the drawing, but in the drawing there are the rhythm. Mm. Um, in another film, uh, Je, um, the tempo of Prokofiev, it uh, Allegro Presto, 160. So it means nine frame. And I use loops of uh, one and a half second. One and a half second is 36 drawings, so nine, 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 nine. So you will see a small excerpt of that film with this rhythm. The film uh, El König, El King, uh, the rhythm is uh, one, one of that, uh, oh, the rhythm is, oh yes, 154 per minute, it's not in my uh, table, but I use um, something between 10 and 9 frames to have the, the rhythm of the, I made, uh, I also gallop in the forest. And this perspective is to put the tree to make the loops of the avance in the forest. And now you will see a line test. First, the six different perspectives, and then the horses who move with the background, uh, and then with the music, and then the horse move uh, against the rhythm of the, of the background. And now the same exact cause of him. In another film, The Ride to the Abyss, uh, the music of Berlioz has a rhythm of 160. Um, I change the background every nine frames, exactly the same rhythm as the other music. And uh, 
it is a big loop of six seconds. I use um, 144 different drawing, and I have so 16 background every nine frame a chance background. The connection between music and image will be more apparent in another film, The Younger and the Cloud. Uh, in that film, the tempo is andante, 90, and uh, I change background every 16 frame, but the animation is normal with two, 12 drawings per second. The Year of the Deer, another film. Um, I like very much a uh, unfinished quartet of uh, Schubert, but it was difficult to tell a story with the existing music, especially for that film. It is a, a Chinese tale and it's important people understand the meaning of this. So I asked a friend, a comp music composer, to make the music and I tell him. I like the three last notes of this quartet for my film. So he made a composition, uh, he followed my storyboard, and, uh, but he, he also was uh, influenced by this quartet and he used the same three notes at the end of the film. We will, we, we will see just the end of the film. <laughs> Loops, another topics. I like to do do loops because not only because sometimes we can save time with the loops, but also for the beauty of the form. And in one early film. Um, perspective, uh, I shoot a friend from a, in a street and I realize at the beginning and at the end she is in the same um, place on the screen and with small retouch I can make the loops. So we will see an exit of that film. <laughs> that comes to my mind. I've been thinking about this because a lot of senior animators across the world have also short films and then either did etching on it, etching or painted on the film. Have you also used this technique to put the film under the glass and then paint it on the glass? No, no, I, I never use uh, scratch the, the, the pellicule. Uh, also, I don't, I, painting on the glass, I use only in one film, uh, the subject of the picture. In, in fact, all my films are painting in acrylic painting, this and on, uh, on acetate. And uh, for that film, um, I follow the, the, the image I shoot live action, so we called it rotoscope. And in that film, it's not acrylic, it's gouache. 
Uh, in another film, I must say a lot of uh, birds on the sky, and I use several uh, loops together. It was more useful than to draw, draw too many uh, birds. We will see a small excerpt of that seconds. In the film, the subject of the picture, in the storyboard, I, in, I draw, we can see, I draw some, uh, some, uh, I, some field of grass, trees, and sky on the, uh, bird on the sky. And I made, I used maybe 12 drawings to make uh, two, one or two seconds, I don't remember exactly, but a very small, seconds, uh, loops, and then I move uh, on this uh, small drawing and I c get maybe 12 second animation, as we will see. And then I think I will make a film only with one loops, but of course a big, a big drawing. And uh, I have uh, existing music for that film, uh, this visual ID to make the loops, but I don't have a, a script, uh, except I, I follow the music of uh, Hector Berlioz, the Ride to the Abyss, and I decide to make the conductor of the center of the image, and he like if he, he directed image and music together. Uh, it was 92 when I finished that film, and we buy a line test. We can find quite cheap line tests at that time. This is for the line test. This is a, one of the 144 painting. And I use the spiral path to, to, to move on these loops. It is uh, six uh, second loops, so in six seconds we are in a different uh, rectangle. Every six seconds we are in a different place, so we cannot realize it is a loop. So after maybe three minutes, I zoom out, and at the end we can realize or not realized, but we can see the beginning at the end together. So it's not something in the time, it is something like a moving painting. Together with the... the At the end, uh, I use uh, two frames by two frames, so the loops become uh, 12 second loops. I draw all the animation at uh, that size, and then I photocopy bigger format uh, the original the painting. In that film, I can use uh, an old painting because when I finish one loop of 36 uh, different drawings, I put in a dryer and I have time to, to do another uh, loops 
and in one month uh, it becomes the painting can dry and I can continue because it's not useful to use all painting for animated film. Is this one of the sheets? And now you will see two loops uh, uh, several times more than in the film to understand how the loops it's made. And if we have time, the film now is four minutes. <coughs> You're done. Hmm? You're done. Yes. I'd like to ask you a question, especially on the loops and the movements which you mentioned. I remember seeing, attending your master class in Bulgaria when we both were, when we both were on the jury. And this question has been haunting me since then about the loops and the cycles which you prominently use in practically all your films. Somehow it connects me to an animation film by, uh, by a Polish animator of 1981 called The Tango. Yeah, it had won the Oscar award also. That, of course, it was shot in a live action, but it had repetitive loops. Of course, it's very different to your style, but somewhere it connects me. Where does this inspiration come from? First, talking about the loops, then I will come to the other inspirations. <coughs> For the, the idea of my, my loops, it is to move on the loops. Uh, because I, it's not such film, beautiful film from Zibnev, Rybzynski, Tango, uh, <coughs> but it's my inspiration comes from uh, one, uh, uh, the optical game, for example, can see uh, like that. This. And if we move, we can also. Uh, see something di a little bit different uh, than the loops, and also because in my f my f my film the um, subject of the picture when I ma made that to save time, and then I say oh it, it can be also be bigger it can be bigger. <laughs> Second question about the inspiration, especially about the look of the film. Somewhere I feel that I can see glimpses of the art movements which were there in Europe, the fauvism and surrealism, maybe a little bit of impressionism also. Uh, are you really influenced by them or they just naturally come to you I, uh, in your films? <coughs> Uh, I I am influenced by painting. I, I like very much to see uh, museum exhibition of painting. And when I I <coughs> try to find uh, documentation for a film, I, I see a lot of painting. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So that so there is some kind of in a subconscious mind. It must have played a role. Also, another thing about your storytelling and uh, the concept. Uh, somewhere again I feel that you are inspired with some mythological stories or short stories. Is that true? Yes, also because when I made a film without dialogue, if I use a, um, a story very know, everybody know, I don't need to explain and I can make a variation about, for example, Cinderella, 
I don't use to explain what the story. Everybody understand it is Cinderella. It is just a different way to tell Cinderella. For first, also a, a little bit the same. I like. I I read a lot of book about first, and I I made maybe four film about the same subject, like the man without the shadows. When the maid who writes a book, it is influenced by force. It's a variation of force. Adelbert von Chamisso. Well, a very important question for all the animators, the students here sitting in the audiences. We have a big question about the financing. Also, that in India, uh, animation is still. Uh, by the producers, they feel that it's a medium for children. People readily give money and sponsors are ready to give funding for a children's film. Uh, if we want in India, if we want to make a typical pure art animation film, we find it very difficult. How do you manage to get uh, funding and finances for your film? Maybe I am lucky to live in Switzerland because we uh, we, we have uh, from, uh, the, the Swiss government helps the cinema. The Swiss TV also must use a percent of this budget to the Swiss production, include short film, and uh, so. Um, I was lucky to get some prize uh, when I start, and we have we were not very a lot of uh, animator at that uh, when I start, and um, uh, I I get I made a, a storyboard and I explain the film and I you I can make a film. It is I don't get money when uh, my film is finished. Only if ch some channel buys uh, the film, but it's not a lot of money. But uh, it is, I get money before I made the film uh, from the storyboard, and and also in in Switzerland we have four part four language. The part we speak French. We have also um, a foundation who give us a percent of the Swiss TV gave, give or the Swiss government give. So these three different places are quite enough to make a short film, not to make a feature film. But even if, yeah, even if it's a art form film not having a, a typical story as such, if you made a film for children, maybe it's more easy to get found because uh, the TV needs this kind of film. This kind of film I made, nobody need except maybe some ch cultural channel and festival. Uh, almost I sent to festival, and although because I I don't use digital, I have a lot of drawing, and every time I finish a film, I have a gallery who. Expose uh, made an exhibition of my work, and I can sell uh, my work. So where does all this energy come from? Yapping, your lovely wife from China. Is that the secret of your enthusiasm? <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but uh, nobody forced me to make a film, and uh, if. Uh, I like to draw, I like to make film, and I, I am uh, lucky to get uh, enough money to to can continue. So why stop? If I don't uh, uh, get ID, I, I don't know what to do, I stop. <laughs> I will stop. No, it's amazing. Uh, I'll add one more thing. Is uh, when we have the retrospective, and of course my voice was better two days back. <laughs> I hope you heard everything what I said. The best part what I found about him was his observation. And we as animators, all filmmakers, all artists, with any form of art, really need to learn from him. When we were sitting in the audience and films were getting played back to back, I did peep in here and there to see when people were coming. But he 
noticed that it is because from the projection he could see shadows of people. So what he told me at the end, I could see shadows coming, not going out, which means that people are really interested in the form. A man who makes a film, <laughs> man without shadow, also notices shadows, which is also amazing. So I like to uh, open the house for questions. And uh, he's there to answer. I'd like to invite Sakar Barve, the young interpreter, to join us in case uh, George's has little trouble. I don't think you have a trouble, George. You are, you know, handling everything very well. Your English is very good. <laughs> In the Battle of San Romano, I don't have a music, existing music, but I have existing images. It is a Battle of San Romano for Paolo Uccello. Uh, and I move four by four from the left angle, no, from the right angle, to move like a, a spiral. It is quite a big drawing, but only 36 to be the film of three minutes. And we'll see a line test of that film. And the same sequence in the film with the music of Judith Kruber-Zitzer. on space, it's also a specialty of animation before uh, the digital arrived. It was complicated to make movement on space with uh, uh, life action and metamorphosis and uh, loops also. So I, I continue to use, uh, because I like uh, handmade work. In 17 p.m., for example, I made a lot of loops in different size, different position, to have a three second rotation with the same speed of uh, on, in all the film. I also use the loops in another film, uh, the, not loop, ellipse, sorry, ellipse, to draw a couple dancing and to move around the couple. So, first I draw the, loop, the couple who dance in different positions. Then, I put together this couple in different size 
and use acrylic painting on and uh, dry pastel for the background. And a small part of the, that film. In another film, I, I draw this staircase, help me to draw some people go out or go down of the staircase. In the man without a shadow, uh, first I want to draw a lot of shadow before the shadow disappears. So I have the idea to draw a cube. Um, the cube turn in one direction and the shadow turn in the opposite direction, like we can see here. And uh, I follow. Uh, I follow this contract to make something strange before the shadow disappear. And we will see the beginning of this film with the cube and the shadow with opposite direction. In another part of that film, uh, I want to draw some body walk around the uh, water and uh, the camera move around him. So first I made some key drawing, like you can understand in this uh, rudimentary sketch. And then I made a, a line test, I correct, and you will see the line test and the result. The sound yeah, disappears. There is sound in this clip. In an, another film, Retouche, I think if the camera wrong turn around two tennis players, no need to draw two players, only one player, and then use reverse, uh, the same animation in reverse. And I also think if we change the point of reference, we can use the same loops with a different uh, position, and for example, the ball don't move, but everything moves, as you can see in the line test.
I know it's a film normally with music. the beginning uh, uh, rudimentary storyboard with only access to follow the music but also to follow the movement in a space. And now we will see the line test of these uh, seconds. In another seconds, I, a man, um, there a man to go up and down in an escalator in a, a one seconds. You will see the two times for, uh, with a man and with a woman in a opposite uh, in a verso, recto and verso of the same animation. Metamorphosis. In, uh, in, in one film, uh, 70 RPM, I made uh, a, a short sequence with metamorphosis, loops, and moving in space together. When I made that, I don't know I made these three topics together like I talk about right now, but uh, in fact, it's that, like that. There are some drawing of these seconds. And the, the short seconds. storyboard of uh, the subject of the picture, we can see some duck move on the water and slowly become printed duck on the curtain. Um, and we will see the result. Years later, I made a film with the same idea to um, use to change something who move, like a hazard adapt in a something who move. It's a film Retouche. This is that one. We will see a small extract of that film.
in the film uh, Earl King, a metamorphosis allowed me to suggest danger and to go in another sequence without cut. In Darwin Knott's book, um, in, a, in the native story that they are break, when they talk about the, their story, um, there are a lot of seconds with the music, with uh, the same rhythm, the music follows the rhythm to, to go from one second to another second. times 16 frames for a subject and two times 60 frames for the metamorphosis in another subject. And now the last example in my film, from one painting to another, um, so we can see a lot of metamorphoses uh, who, follow the with the, uh, who follow the rhythm of the music. Questions to the master. The house is open. I have the mic. Good afternoon and thank you very much for introducing a 70 year old to something that he has never seen before. Now, I've had a problem with animation because if I think cinema, 24 frames. And then suddenly we had video which was 25 frames. So it used to knock my music haywire. Uh, what is your yardstick? Is it, if it's just frames, it makes sense because then the music can be composed to it. But in actual uh, exhibition, now you being in Sweden, then possibly you're going, you know, uh, 24 frames a second. But how do you manage the frames bit? Uh, maybe I don't explain very clearly, but of course we need it's every second we have 40, uh, we have 24 uh, frames. And usually I made 12 drawing two by two to have one second. But if I use nine frame uh, for uh, a nine frame, nine frame, nine frame, it's just the rhythm. The rhythm of uh, means 160 per minute. That when Sir is planning sequences or whatever, yes. there are nine frames, nine frames. I understand that. Yes. But nine frames on the basis of 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second or 25 frames a second. Because okay. nine frames then have to be to run for a particular time. Yeah, yeah. Correct? Yeah. So that is what I'm trying to ask. Okay, okay. Ki what is the basis of the f the final exhibition speed? 24 or 25 or what? Okay. In digital, anything goes. Yes. Your computers are all 30 frames a second. Hmm. Cinema I, I s is supposed to be 24 or 25 frames a second. 
Or Alors, we just leave it as a question mark. Ok, ok. Alors, euh, vous utilisez neuf cadres, c'est ça euh, Dans votre film, neuf cadres euh, Frames, nine frames Oui, mais c'est image aussi. Neuf images. Ok, neuf images. Mais, euh, est-ce que vous utilisez euh, 24 images ou 20, euh, 25 images comme la base de ces neuf, neuf images J'utilise toujours 24 images. Okay. Parce que, comme j'ai montré ça, il y a beaucoup de connexions avec les, les tempos de la musique. Avec 25 images, il y en a aussi, mais déjà, le gros défaut de 25 images, en animation, on fait souvent 12 dessins pour une seconde. Si on a 25 images, qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire 12, de, 12 dessins et demi, ça ne va pas. Ok. Il dit qu'il toujours utilise 25 uh, frames. frames, yes. Uh, it's, so it's, 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 it's standard pile uh, def. Oh, yeah, yes. Got that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And once again, fantastic because from 1970 to now, and most of it is hand drawn. And to think layers and transitions, so God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manishi, for asking such a wonderful question, Georges. Ramishi has been one of my first clients when I started my career in animation. And he comes up with such brilliant questions. Thank you so much, Ramishi, for coming. Uh, also, I would like to especially thank A.K. Bir Saab, who has graced us by giving his presence. Thank you so much, Peer Saab, for coming. Vaiba, thank you for being here. Rajni Bhai, thank you. Uh, Sanjay Verma ji, Arun ji, uh, Rashmi ji. I am seeing so many familiar faces. Before we end the session, I wanted to thank everybody. So most of this is without dialogue. Uh, though you did say that you would want to do something with dialogue, is this? I'm, I'm trying to wonder whether uh, you know how we can adapt this style to narrative uh, animation, perhaps with a story. Uh, uh, voice. Uh, il se demande s'il est, uh, si est possible d'adapter ce style uh, avec la narration, avec uh, la voix. Je pense, je pense que c'est possible, mais en tout cas, dans les films que j'ai faits, j'ai justement essayé d'expliquer quelque chose, de montrer quelque chose avec des images et pas avec des paroles. Mais suivant le sujet, euh, ce n'est pas possible de se passer de dialogue. Ça dépend tout du, de ce qu'on veut raconter. Si on veut raconter quelque chose de compliqué ou de très drôle, il faut un dialogue. He's saying that it's better to convey certain things uh, only through this medium because they are better said uh, through this style and not through dialogues. Uh, I just wanted to know, sir, if you spend more time in pre-production planning all of this or in producing it, like where do you find it to be more complicated in figuring out the transitions and the concepts and everything or in actually producing it? Avant la production pour des courts métrages c'était assez simple peut-être ça vous prenait un mois pour euh, mettre au point mon, mon histoire sur un storyboard et faire un dossier de production mais maintenant c'est beaucoup plus compliqué parce que maintenant il existe des vrais producteurs on doit passer par eux moi j'ai pas besoin puisque j'ai évolué avec ça mais pour un étudiant maintenant il doit passer par un producteur, c'est trop compliqué de, de faire les demandes, les ordinateurs, les, les programmes, tout ça, il faut connaître. Donc, quelqu'un qui fait ça tout le temps, qui produit beaucoup de films, il sait comment on fait. Hein, quelqu'un qui commence, c'est trop compliqué. Okay. Vous dites qu'actuellement, il faut passer par des producteurs, c'est pourquoi il est compliqué Oui, oui ça c'est compliqué la production. Et seuls les producteurs connaissent la production, ce qui n'était pas le cas il y a 50 ans. Il n'y avait pas de producteur d'ailleurs, de pour les courts-métrages. Oui. oui. Uh, so, 50 years back, uh, there weren't really uh, producers who came up with short films. So, that time it was uh, really difficult, but uh, nowadays it's, uh, it's comparatively easy. 
Uh, now it's too much complicated for uh, uh, people who start to make short film. You must uh, go ask a producer. And uh, for me, we, because I evolved uh, with this complication, I can continue to produce myself, but I don't spend one month. Maybe I spend six months. Okay, we'll end this session here. Thank you, all of you, for joining us for this wonderful session. <laughs>